Hi everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the Feature Discovery Series dedicated to our very first Microsoft Flight Simulator expansion, Reno Air Races. I'm David Oden, Creative Director at Azobo Studio, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to what we have developed for this great addition to the scene. I will first present the Reno Air Race event itself, then I will share with you how we have replicated this real-life event into the sim. I will tell you how it translates in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And finally, we will look at all these little additional features that makes this racing experience so cool and unique. In real life, Reno Air Race happens every year at the Reno Steel Airport in Nevada, USA. Simply put, it's just the fastest motor race in the world. Take a plane flying together on the same track, at more than 400 miles per hour, keep them below 250 feet from the ground, and you get the picture. It will push your piloting skills to the extreme limit. To us, these pilots are real aviation knights. So we have worked hard to give justice to this incredible and unique event and to make this a great multiplayer experience in Flight Sim. So how we did this? First, we have worked closely with the Reno Air Race Association and dozens of pilots and planes owners to develop a highly authentic recreation of this real-life event. Some of us had even the chance to visit and really feel the true nature of the show. As a result, we have completely upgraded the Reno area in the sim with new satellite data and altitude data. The steel airport has been carefully manually modeled. We have added the crowd, collection planes, food truck, the legendary planes such as the V-Speed and the Clay Lacy, and tons of other little details. We have even worked with Danny Clusen, who is the legendary Reno Air Race announcer, to generate dynamic announcements depending on your own performance in the sim, which adds a fantastic true-to-life flavor to the whole thing. We had the same approach for the star of the show, the planes. Indeed, this race features truly iconic planes as even if they are formally based on stock planes, they have been so highly customized and optimized by their teams of passionate pilots and engineers that each of them are just technically unique. To give you an idea, these birds are going twice faster than the stock version in most of the cases. As said before, we have worked with the plane owners and pilots to really infuse this uniqueness into the game. They have sent us pictures of every single detail and also shared the key information about aerodynamics, performance and specs. Thanks to their great engagement and passion, we have been able to make them as unique as they are in real life. So each of them is in fact a piece of collection in this regard. In a nutshell, you will need to fly fast, very low and stay as close as possible to the optimal flight path. Pylons define the overhead tracks for each class, and your goal is to make your turn as close as possible to the pylon. Flying too high will result in a time penalty applied at the end of the run. Same thing if you cut or miss one of those pylons. In case of a crash, your plane will be respawned back onto the track instantly, allowing you to continue your run. Of course, in each of those cases, your final time will be impacted. Reno Race features two modes, Time Trial and Quick Match. Time Trial will allow you to compete for your leaderboard's ranking and also to prepare yourself for actual race by using your ghost as a rabbit. It will help you to understand the subtleness required to earn this little millisecond that will make all the difference at the end. It's definitely a great way to make quick progress. But obviously, the most challenging and thrilling mode is the quick match. Each session will start with a solo qualification map defining your starting grid position for the race itself. This phase tends to be more important than in general road race experience, as despite very high speed of this aircraft, overtake a plane is much harder than it looks. Then comes the race itself, where you have to cross the line first at the end of 6 or 8 laps depending on the class. Performing in Reno Air Race session is really about three-dimensional pure trajectory and it's an ultra-demanding challenge that requires intense focus and subtle input. Overreact and you will generate too much drag and then lose speed. Underreact and you lose time or crash. So you really have to fight for every single beat of velocity but also to permanently update other aircraft location and take into account their wake turbulence to find your own path. 
If you still have mental time, you can try to use very gently your rudder in some turns to reduce your drag. Keep also in mind that each race will feature different weather conditions, such as wind speed and direction, for example, which will twist the whole thing and will force you to quickly adapt your flight habits. So as soon as you get used to it, you will soon realize that your mental is always under pressure and that cold blood is the key to success, as always in aviation. Important note about this mode. It's the only situation where the plane specs are normalized to let everyone pick up its favorite planes and still have the exact same chance to win the race. So to be clear, in free flight or time trial, each plane of each class will have its very own performance based on the specs which have been provided by the actual Reno pilots and owner themselves. Reno Race Expansion puts you in the cockpit of four different iconic types of racing aircraft. The P-51 Mustang for the Unlimited class, the North American T-6 for the T-6 class, the Pit Special S-1 for the B-Plan class, and the L-39 Albatross for the Jet class. These aircraft have not only very distinct styles, but also different flight models and course variation. B-plane class is probably a good starting point. Indeed, the pits is super agile and their track is shorter. That said, it's as difficult to master than any other class. Pits is also the only class where the race starts on the runway, which definitely add another layer of challenge. The T-6 is a former World War II fighter with a big engine and a much larger body. It's actually much more maneuverable than you would expect, but this plane generates a lot of drag if you apply too much Gs during your turns. So as a result, you will have to really find the best compromise between tight turns and keep your momentum and speed. P-51 Mustang is a piston engine too, but it's much faster and the track is then much longer. The difference with the pits and the T6 is quite obvious and it's to me the one that takes the most time to really master and perform with. L39 Albatros is a jet powered aircraft so clearly the fastest, which means that every little hesitation will make you feel like you are behind the aircraft. L39 trajectory may look easier, but actually requires the highest level of moment-to-moment -moment focus and precision. So a few words about the Reno score. The Reno score has been added into the scene to allow better matchmaking and a long-term competition between seamers. So how it works? Basically, everyone will start the Reno experience with 8,000 Reno point dispatch into each of the four classes. At the end of each race, you will gather or lose Reno point depending on your performance, but also based on the Reno score of your opponent. So to be clear, you will for example gather more point if you beat a better ranked opponent and vice versa. The Reno class score is then used to define your class ranking and global ranking, but will also optimize the matchmaking for the next race. Ultimately. This will tend to make the overall multiplayer experience more interesting, fun and fair, whatever your skills and progression. Two additional little tips about the Reno score here. First, if you quit the race before the end, you will be considered as the last one at the end of the race and lose all your points. Secondly, also note that only 70% of your final score is based on your race ranking. This means that 10% of the remaining points together is informed by your visual assistance level, 10% if you made the pole position or not, and 10% if you performed the fastest lap in the race. So the idea here is that you should keep the focus until the very end of the race if you want to increase your Reno score. I also wanted to show you some cool features especially developed for Reno Air races. First, the ground effects. During the race, planes generate dust depending on your altitude and speed. It's actually quite fun and in fact useful. In general, when you see this, it means that the one you are chasing crack under pressure. To celebrate Reno plane as it deserves, we have improved the VFX behavior and rendering of the exhaust based on the actual engine state. Normally, you should never reach 
g-force that leads to a g-lock during a Reno race, which is basically loss of consciousness. But in some cases, to avoid crash most of the time, or outside of Reno itself, fly Flight Simulator now features a true-to-life simulation of the impact of the g-force on the pilot based on time of exposure and forces. As in real life, the g-force effect is highly dependent of the pilot itself and his gear. These parameters are now also exposed in the option menu, where you will be able to define if you are a general aviation pilot or a trained jet pilot, and if you use a G-Force suit or not. <music> Multiplayer improvement. To make the race really fun, fair, and engaging, we had to improve the multiplayer accuracy. Huge improvements have been made here, and this will benefit to the wall simulator, which is great. VR. I cannot finish this episode without letting you know the effort made to port Reno on VR and how it shines. To me, it's simply the best use of the VR in flight sim. It's actually hard to describe, but it goes further than just it's a better immersion. It's really about the way a Reno pilot understands and thinks its surroundings. And the VR implementation of Reno is just amazing. If you have the chance to get your hands on a VR gear, you can't miss the Reno experience. It's just mind blowing. As both a flight simulator and racing fan since my youngest age, I swear Reno Air Race was a true reveal for me. Because of its challenge, speed, and also because nothing compares to it. As such, I really believe Reno Air Race is a great addition to flight simulator world, and actually to the racing genre in general. So, we really hope you will enjoy it as we do. And to be honest, we are humbly looking forward to race against you guys. See you there. Bye.